going to share with us about her trip to Brazil. Brazil is always exciting, so this should be a very exciting morning. Give it up for Shanna. Thank you. Oh, it's working. That's good. Ah, well, good morning, everyone. It is my great pleasure to share with you all of the cool things that God did in Brazil and also wants to do here. Um, and I'm very, very excited. And uh, so, ooh, don't exhale loudly into the microphone. Okay, good, good to know. Um, so, first, the, the purpose of sharing all these testimonies with you is, that's good, Brick, just keep it on that for a minute. Um, the purpose of the testimonies isn't just so you can hear some fun stories and then go on your merry way, but the purpose is to, to see God move through the power of the testimony. And I've seen this happen, where God moves and touches people through the power of the testimony. And I know many of you have sown into this trip and sown into me as a person. And I'm, I'm, wait, I'm looking for the harvest here for you guys, that you will, you will reap what you have sown tenfold, thirtyfold what you have sown into me, and that, that we will see a time of harvest. So that's, that's really the heart behind this, and that all glory would be given to God. Um, so if you go to the next slide, Rick. So while I was reading in Corinthians, I came across this passage, and it really resonated with me. So I wanted it to be the passage for the trip, the, the trip verse. And it's, it's uh, what Paul is saying, that my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. And the reason that really resonated with me is I, I haven't told everyone my story here, but I, the, the way I came to faith was a lot through my intellect and through reasoning. Um, and I know the Spirit was using the things that, that I saw where I was weighing the pros and cons of being a Christian. But really, when I became a Christian, my faith was 50-50. Was and I chose to believe in God without even really being sure if He really existed or not. Um, so it's been a long journey, still trying to get to 100%. I'm pretty sure I hit 100 on this trip at one point or another. So, and it's been 14 years, a 14-year long journey. Okay. <laughs> So, you know, year two was, you know, 51, 49, and then maybe was back down to 50, 50, and, you know. So anyway, so it's, it's been a long journey. Um, so human wisdom has only gotten me so far, because I can, I can, you can think everything in your mind, you can know the things and know all the teaching, but until you experience it in your heart, a lot of it can feel empty or not true um, until you experience it. And I believe we, we are a healing church. We take the broken we minister to them. Um, they find healing and rest. We talk about emotionally healthy spirituality. And part of healing is also praying for the sick and seeing people healed. And that's what I'm praying for for this church, that we've, we've walked in it in the past, and it's our inheritance, and we will walk in it again more. I know we already are to a degree, but, but we're praying for more. So, all right, um, next slide, please. Okay, so we'll start with something simple. The day one. First we arrive at the airport, and um, we check into our hotel. We, we get on the bus. We, we you know, get off to the hotel. Um, I got a really sweet note from my roommate where she, um, she'd written me, hello, unknown roommate. You know, I, I pray blessings for you and that God would do many good things through you. And uh, it was really sweet. Um, I got along really well with my roommate, and that was really good. Her name is Jasmine. And she's going to come up later, so remember Jasmine. So I knew that we were going to have a time of impartation with the team of Global Awakening and with Randy Clark. So I tried to prepare my heart in advance for what this impartation was, because I knew impartation can get a little wild. And I've been want, I want God you know, to knock me down and roll me on the ground and electrify me. I've been wanting those things. But I tried to set my expectations aside and just accept whatever the Lord was willing to give me in that moment so that I didn't feel jealous or envious of what other people were experiencing, and I would be able to receive what God had for me in that moment. 
gratefully and that I would be able to take what he has giving, given me and walk with that. So, um, so during that impartation, there were people just falling left and right. It comes to me and the first person goes past and I don't feel anything. Second person comes past, I feel a bit of a fire in my heart, just like a and then my heart was beating really fast and then it kind of went away pretty quickly. But I was excited, it was something, you know? I didn't get <laughs> knocked down like the people around me, but I, I felt something and I was grateful that I had prepared my heart in advance because I thank God, thank you Lord for what you've given me, I will take what you've given me. And um, there was one person who was on the floor and I could feel in my heart a little bit of, I don't know, contempt or envy of, oh, why does he get so much, you know? So I asked the Lord, just cleanse me, Lord. Cleanse me of that. Um, I, don't, I, I, I want you to give people things, and I don't want to feel that in my heart, what somebody else is receiving. I want to just, whatever you have for me, that I will choose to be grateful, and I will walk that out. Um, so that was, that was really good. And he did heal me of that little bit of contempt when I asked him to, to cleanse me. So the next time we had impartation, I didn't, didn't feel that at all. Um, all right, so just as I'm telling you these stories, I'm going to be telling you a lot of stories about people getting healed. And if any of you have any of the conditions that I speak about, the same condition, just check your body throughout the service because I have seen that people can get healed without even being touched, without being laid hands on, and without anyone saying any kind of prayer. So I just want to create that expectation in the room. That is something God is able to do and has done and will continue doing. So just check your body throughout the service, and if you're noticing something happening or if you are healed during one of these stories, just interrupt me and wave, okay? Don't keep that stuff for yourself. It's the reason that God does this to increase all of our faith. It's not just for you. We are here to bless the body, okay? So don't keep that for yourself. It's for all of us. Um, so if he does that, interrupt me. We're gonna, we'll bless what God is doing, and it will increase faith in the room. So that's, that's that. Without further ado, uh, uh, next slide. Okay, so this is the first church that we visited, Igreja Plenitudi Krista, um, a very lovely church. Um, I, I, you know, blotted out the eyes because, you know, I don't, I didn't get their permission to take their picture, so bear with me. Um, there are just a couple of things from the sermons at this church that were really good takeaways for me that I'd like to share. Um, one of them was Charity Cook was teaching on words of knowledge, and, uh, basically a word of knowledge is something that you couldn't have known if God didn't tell you, and... They, in Global Awakening, they focus on words of knowledge specifically for healing. So it could be a, a thought or it could be a, a sympathetic pain somewhere. And it's, it's actually not very exciting and mysterious. It's just like a bloop, weird pain. You're like, huh, that was weird. But if you know it could be a word of knowledge, you're like, oh, maybe that was a word of knowledge, you know? Um, anyway, we could talk about words of knowledge more some other time they, because they used up whole sermons just talking about words of knowledge. But... Um, I know this, this church, many of you are very familiar with that already, but um, my takeaway from charity was that spiritual gifts are not a badge of honor. They are to see people healed and to reveal God's heart to others. So words of knowledge are a revelation of what God wants to do. And here's the big one. You risk being wrong for the reward of being right. And there's a way to present a word of knowledge where it doesn't make anyone uncomfortable. If you go up to somebody and say, you have cancer, and then they don't have cancer, that's really awkward. <laughs> it's really awkward. They feel awkward, you feel awkward, everybody feels awkward. Lose, lose. If you go up to somebody and say, Are you, do you, have you had cancer in the past? Or, you know, I, I'm not sure if I heard this correctly, but, you know, d does cancer mean anything to you at this time? then they could say, oh, wow, yes, it does mean something to me. Or, no, I, I don't. And, oh, no problem. You know, have a nice day. And they, they feel okay, you feel okay, everyone feels okay. <laughs> so that, that they, taught, they taught on that. That was nice. Um, and then there was a, <laughs> a team member um, on, the, on the trip 
um, Kiang, uh, there was something he said that, that stood out to me that I wrote down. He said that to purify your heart before the Lord daily and to worship in spirit and truth. Um, purify your heart daily. It's just like what John was doing a couple, couple years ago, year ago, where we were every day we were praying, um, search my heart, O Lord, and know my anxious thoughts. That's, it's good to do that. Yeah. Okay, next slide. Okay, this is a sweet space, if I do say so. And then right kind of on the right there, there's a, there's a Brazilian flag. Um, but this was the, the snack room that we went to. Um, and the, the girl on the right was my translator, Dani, at this church. And she was just a joy to work with. Her English was very good. And... Um, we had a kind of a similar mind. She's a chemical engineer, and she had a, a lot of similar faith, doubt, struggles that I've had in the past, so we had a really good conversation. I was encouraged. She was encouraged. Um, and then she introduced me to her friend Fabio, who had been diagnosed with leukemia two years ago, um, right as the pandemic began. Um, and so we exchanged some war stories. For any of you who don't know, um, I had an autoimmune disease that I had to go to the hospital for and get a bone marrow transplant. It's very similar, uh, the, it's very similar treatment to somebody that leukemia would have. So it was just very encouraging. It felt like a divine appointment. It was, it was really nice. And um, so, oh yeah, this was the, the day that we prayed um, we prayed for a woman named Adrienne before we went to this snack room, um, and she had a blood clot pain in her leg, and she also had a uh, pain in her neck, and her pain was an eight before in her leg, and after praying, it was a zero, and I, she was just, she was getting ministered to by the Lord, and this, I think this was after her, her leg uh, pain went away, and she was just like this, and I felt compelled to say that, that the Lord loves her worship, and she just, her reaction was not what I expected, because it seemed like a very normal, you know, not very interesting thing to say, just, oh, the, word, the Lord loves your worship, you know, whatever, but she was like, whoa, that is a confirmation for me, I was just praying about this this morning, about my worship, and God, and this pain in my neck has been preventing me from worshiping the Lord the way that I, that I, that I want to. And I was like, whoa, maybe that was a word of knowledge that I didn't know. But it was cool. So, and I prayed for her neck, and she was crying and sobbing, and it was beautiful. Um, so that was cool. Um, anyway, so then when we were, after we had our delicious snack, and snack was often a full meal, so it was a lot of good food in Brazil. <laughs> After this, we prayed for the cooks who had, been, who had prepared the meal. And we were seeing the cooks, you know, getting, getting hit with the Holy Spirit and falling and just blast the cooks. It was a good time. They were crying a lot. It was really good. Okay, next slide. Um, so here is some more takeaways from... Plenty, from Igreja Plenitude, um, there's Carter Wood, I believe, uh, I'm not sure if he's going to be at Voice of the Apostles, but um, he was talking about tips on releasing the anointing uh, for healing, and they were really good tips that I wrote down. So one is believe in Jesus more than the results, basically giving the results to God and having your eyes focused on Jesus, and it's not, you know, I don't know what I was going to say. So, number two, desire more to feel love in our hearts than power in our hands. It's just like what I said earlier about the, the gifts of the Spirit not being a badge of honor so that you can go around and say, I have a lot of gifts of the Spirit, but it's really to, to break our hearts with compassion, to pour out the heart of God to others and see His kingdom come on earth. So, that's what this number two is for, is that the heart of God is love and the purpose of the spiritual gifts is for love. And that's more important, more important than any power that we may be imparted. And then three is a good one. Uh, acknowledge every good thing in you rather than your defects. Acknowledge every good thing in you rather than your defects. Every good thing. All of them. 
okay? Acknowledge every good thing in you rather than your defects. Amen. Yeah. We all know we have defects, but Jesus paid for all of those, so we don't have to be bogged down by them anymore. Um, there was also a fourth point about entering authentic spiritual worship, but I didn't really know how to explain that, so I kind of left it off the slide, but if you want to know more about that, just ask John. I'm sure he knows what that meant. <laughs> okay, so... Here's another interesting thing. When, I was, uh, when, when Donnie and I were going around praying for people, um, I was taken to a woman who had a bunch of pain on the right side of her body. Um, so we were praying for her, and she, um, she said she felt something in her heart, but her pain was not going away at all. So I asked her, is there anyone in, you li in your life that you need to forgive? And it turns out there was. And a lot of times that can, that it, it doesn't have to necessarily, but it can block your ability to receive healing from God if you're harboring unforgiveness. So I asked her, are you, are you willing to forgive the person? And unfortunately, she was not ready to do so. Um, but I just encouraged her to get, you know, get plugged into your church, find a small group, work through that, because you've got to let that go. Um, so I thought that was interesting and worth sharing. Um, then there were a lot of folks who wanted prayer for uh, marital issues or marital strife or, or something along those lines. And I'm not married, so I just did the best I can. I, oh, oh, yeah, there's this picture that I use with the triangle. I don't know if you've ever seen that one. It's where husband and wife are in the corners, and God is at the top. And the closer you move to God, the closer you move to each other. And the more you go your own way and do things your own way, the further you move away from each other and from God. So... As the single unmarried person, I'm going, well, I know this. Maybe this can help. <laughs> okay, next slide. All right, so Igreja Adonai. I love this place. This place was great. Um, it was really cold, actually. So while you all were having a nice summer in Brazil, we were freezing. None of us were packed for the cold that we did not expect. Um, because, you know, even Allison said, it's hot. It's hot. But she also told me the weather report is always wrong. So you did? Yeah, didn't you tell me their weather reporting is really inaccurate? Okay, never mind. I, I was attributing something that she did not say to her. Anyway, we all had to go buy sweaters at some point because it was cold. Um, but this place was, was really nice. Um, so next slide. There's some more takeaways here, and don't worry, we're, we're going to be getting into the stories. So there, there's stories coming. So here's a good one. Um, Tom Jones was preaching. Pretty sure he's coming to Voice of the Apostles because he goes around with Randy all over the place. Uh, point number one, if you don't believe the sick are healed, you won't pray for the sick. And I've definitely seen that. But I would say that I believed that God healed the sick through other people, but he just chose to pass me by and not heal through me. And so I didn't have the faith to believe that God would heal through me. And, you know, and I would pray, and then maybe nothing would happen. And, you know, I would just get discouraged. Or I would see somebody who's sick and think, well, I could pray for them, I guess, but I just don't want to be discouraged because then I'll just be discouraged and not want to pray again. And they're not going to see anything happen. And it was just a very defeat, very defeatist attitude. Defeated before I even started, you know. Um... Oh, yeah, the second point, the second point is funny. If you don't know what God has specifically called you to do, so if, you, if he hasn't revealed your specific destiny to you yet, like he hasn't called you to start a circus in Florida, true story, by the way, um, then just heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead, and preach good news to the poor until something better comes along. <laughs> because... You know, I think, I think we can get really caught up in what's my specific destiny? Which specific job do I need to take? And what, you know, what should I do with this or what should I do with that? And um, if it's not clear, if God hasn't, hasn't yet put you onto a specific path, we already know what we are to do until something better comes along. You know, is there really anything better? You know, that's the, that's the joke. But, you know, God does have specific 
good works for us to walk into. And uh, as long as we're following his, you know, as long as we're, we're seeing to see his kingdom come, then we'll be guided onto the, the right path. Um, I also, I liked this one, um, to focus on the possibilities rather than the problems. And the example for that was Joshua and Caleb scouting out the promised land along with the 10 other people who nobody remembers their names. Everybody knows Joshua and Caleb and nobody remembers the names of the other 10. Um, they were looking at the possibilities of what God was going to do and not the problems, which was the, the giants or whatever were in the pro promised land. And then the analogy he used was, um, was our focus. And he used a pen like this. And he said, uh, if your destiny is back there, and that's what God is calling you to, if you, and these are your problems, if you're looking at your problems, then your destiny becomes blurry. And what God has for you becomes blurry because your focus is on here. This is sharp. This is blurry. And then the opposite is also true. If you're looking back there at your destiny, what God has called you into, your problems are suddenly blurry and no longer the focus. So I, I liked that one. Wrote it down. Okay. This one was fun too. Are you ready for this? So... And this is copyrighted, I'm sure this is copyrighted by Tom Jones. So, Tom, if you ever watch this, I'm, I'm quoting you. So, they know where it's from. Okay, so this is what he had everyone do. He had the whole room repeat after him. I choose to believe the truth of the Holy Spirit instead of the lies of the enemy. Are you willing to do that with me? Okay, so, okay, repeat after me. I choose to believe the truth of the Holy Spirit over the lies of the enemy. I choose to believe the truth of the Holy Spirit over the lies of the enemy. And now say it with more authority. I choose to believe the truth of the Holy Spirit over the lies of the enemy. I choose to believe the truth of the Holy Spirit over the lies of the enemy. I choose to believe the truth of the Holy Spirit over the lies of the enemy. There we go. Hallelujah. So, um, there are some stories from Igreja, Igreja Adonai. Um, I had a lovely translator named Nicole. And uh, there were some people coming up for prayer in my line, and there was a, a woman next to me who was praying for people, and I saw a guy waiting in her line, and I ran out of people to pray for. So I asked him if he wanted prayer, and he said, no, 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 I want her. And I was like, okay, <laughs> that's, that's fine. Um, so we, in, the, in between, we went up for a snack. We came back out, and I asked her, hey, did you, there was that guy who was, was behind those two women you were praying for. Did you get to pray for him? And she said she didn't. And, and I saw him walk by. So I went and got him. I went over there and I said, hey, you. Yeah, you. Do you want prayer? She's free now. You, you can go get prayer right now. And his face, he was like this. His face went, <gasps> he was so excited. I, I don't know what it was about her, but he felt really drawn to her. So I was like, okay, she's free right now. Let's go. Let's go get prayer. So he comes up with one of his friends, he gets prayer from her, and his allergies get healed, just, just like that. So I was like, well, I guess he was right to go to her, you know? I guess, <laughs> you know? Um, and then uh, this woman uh, from our team, Petra, she had a word for a right knee. Every so often, my right knee bothers me, so I wasn't sure if it was for me, but I was like, I'll take prayer. Um, so she was about to start praying for me when this little girl comes up, maybe an eight-year-old little girl. And she's just the sweetest little thing trying to speak to me in Portuguese. And I've got my broken Portuguese half Spanish that I'm trying to, res you know, respond to her in. Um, and her little friends come and they offer me a snack and it's really cute. And then so now, then there's two little girls there. And I asked them, do you know how to pray? And they go, yeah, yeah, we know. And I was like, okay, can you pray for my knee? And so, so these two little girls and, uh, and Petra from the, the team, they were, they were praying for my knee. It was just the cutest little thing. 
Um, and then there was a woman named Jessica. I was praying for her with my translator, Nicole. And we were just praying for her, and the Lord was kind of touching her. And I really felt like the Lord just needed to give her more. So I was like, okay, Lord, just give her more. Give her more. And man, he gave her more. She sunk down into the floor, and then she was on the floor. And so I just blessed that. And then my translator, Nicole, as we had been praying for the people earlier, she was tearing up, and she was getting really moved. And uh, Jessica was the last person that, we, that was in our line. So then I turned to Nicole. And I said, okay, Nicole, it's your turn. Come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit. She sinks down onto the floor crying. And so then I'm just here and I'm just blessing her and blessing her. And they're just there, they're crying. And it was beautiful. It was so beautiful. I was so encouraged. Um, and I asked the Lord, um, I asked the Lord if he would heal me of something to increase my faith. Because... I want to be able to, hmm, to experience for it for myself, so that I knew that, you know, there's just something about experiencing it for yourself and seeing others. And even if a hundred people say I was touched by God and I was healed, I was just like, please, just heal me too. I want to, you know, I want in on this. To be continued at a later time. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, day four. There's not too much to say about these slides, but we went to the marketplace, and there was a lot of good food and good shopping, and we prayed for this man who, uh, he, he prayed for safety for his little corner with his shop. So we, we prayed. I prayed. And that's Nicole, that, my translator that was on the floor. She's lovely. All right, next slide. Okay. Impartation round two things get a little spicier. Because now Randy is in town. Um, the first few days we didn't have Randy, and then Randy joins. Um, we check out of the first hotel. We go to the Bristol Hotel, and then we go to Verbo Vivo. Very, very nice church. And at this impartation, there's more blasting happening. And blasting is basically, I don't, for any of you who don't know, blasting is when the Holy Spirit falls on you, and you can barely contain the power that he's pouring out on you. Um, and it's a, not a very scientific term, in case you were wondering. <laughs> in case you were wondering. Um, okay, so there's this impartation round two, the whole team, you know, we're listening to stories, and then we get up, and, and then we, we line up in a, in a row like this on either side, and then the, the team folks, they're walking through, and they're, whoa, they're blessing, blessing, you know, imparting, you know, get more Holy Spirit, you know, all that stuff. Um, for me, I felt maybe, I felt maybe a little bit of something, and I was kind of like maybe sinking down a little bit, maybe a little bit of twitching, but it wasn't all that much. And, and you know, I had prepared, prepared my heart to accept anything, but I'm like, oh, Lord, I really wanted more. Come on. And it was over pretty quickly, and I get up, and I'm like, oh, well, I guess I'll just bless what, what the other people are experiencing. So I'm like, well, you know, more Holy Spirit, bless you, whatever. And, and I'm standing, I end up standing in a corner of a room, and there are these two lovely ladies, Sue and Barb, and I'd been talking to them. Oh, I tried to have Barb interpret one of my dreams. If you're, any of you were interested, it was like a fantasy novel. Very interesting dream. Anyway, they're standing behind me, and this hand comes out of nowhere and grabs my shoulder, and they're like, we want to pray for you. And they pull me back into the, side, into the wall, and I'm going, okay. So uh, I'm in the wall. There are these lovely ladies on either side. They start praying for me and pouring it out and pouring it out until I'm like, whoa, there's a lot happening. And, I'm, um, and it was really cool. And oh, don't exhale. So I started feeling super duper heavy. And then I kind of started this little twitch thing, which lasted for the rest of the trip. I kept twitching at very odd moments. It was interesting. Involuntary. I don't fake that kind of stuff. I don't just do this, you know, just for fun. I did that time. I did that time. That was fake, okay? <laughs> but, um, okay, I'm still, I'm, at this point, I'm still trying to grow in words of knowledge, trying to grow in hearing the Lord's voice and understanding what he's speaking to me, and I'm trying to do what John tells us every week, that faith is spelled R-I-S-K, so I'm, you know, I'm not really sure what I'm hearing is correct, so I, at Verbo Vivo, I thought, 
I heard um, older, you know, I thought I saw an older gentleman hitting his head, so I shared that. Nobody came up for prayer for that, and I was like, oh, I don't know if that was right or not. Okay, so just move that on. But uh, the coolest story from Verbo Vivo, and I have a, a video of it on my phone if anyone wants to see it, but I was praying for this woman. Um, oh, man, who was it? Oh, go to the next slide, if you would. Thank you. Yeah, this is just another, more pictures from Verbo Vivo. <laughs> Sorry, working on that part. All right, um, this church was really, really big. There were hundreds of people in the sanctuary, and there were people lined all the way across the back, and there were 400 or more people in the overflow rooms. There were a lot of people. Um, and I prayed for a woman named Maria Flores who had severe acid reflux. Um, she was on medication for it. She could feel it while, you know, right before I prayed, and I prayed for her, and she said it went away completely. All acid reflux be gone in Jesus' name. It was really cool. And then she had me pray for her daughter who had um, a pain and a pressure in her left eye right along here. Um, and after I prayed, she said all that pressure went away completely. So that was really cool. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I also prayed for this woman. This is, sorry, I got sidetracked, but there were the woman that, whose video I have. Um, I prayed for her for um, also an eye issue. Might have been the same eye, was it? It was, her, it was her left eye also. Yeah, I think somebody else had a word of knowledge for a left eye, and then they came to me, so it wasn't my word. Anyway, so I prayed for her um, left eye, and she gets basically blasted. She falls down. And this doesn't happen when I pray for people. If you've received prayer for me, have you fallen down? No, you have not. <laughs> anyway, so I go, you know, pain, leave now, and all that, you know, using the five-step prayer model. And she goes down, and she's, you know, kind of feeling some power. And I'm going, that's cool. That's awesome. And so she comes up, and she looks at me, and she goes, whoa, I can see so much more clearly. I can see your eye color. You're... Eye color is green. Well, she told me my eye color is green. It was probably the lighting, and it's actually blue, but there is actually a bit of green in there, so it's, it's anyway, I believed her that she could see better. Um, and she said all that pressure that was on the left side of her eye was gone completely, and it was really cool, and she was going to need cataract surgery, and she's like, I'm not going to need cataract surgery, um, and she says that she experienced three miracles that day, that she was saved. And she was healed somewhere in her legs where she was going to need, I think, knee surgery or something. And she was, yeah, yeah. If you want to see the video, come see the video. Um, we also prayed for Pamela's right ankle. Um, she was unable to turn it in a full circle like this. So after praying, she was like, oh, wow, I couldn't do this before. So she was rolling her ankle and rolling it and trying it out and... Um, after praying, she was able to do that. I'd say the pain was about 80% better. Um, she was unable to roll at all. She was able to do this without any pain. And then going back like this was maybe there's still a tiny bit left. But hopefully the Lord continued his work and completed it in her. That was exciting. All right, next slide. So if you're a person named Randy Clark, and everyone knows your name, and everyone invites you to their church, um, how do you stay humble? How do you not get a big head about how, the Lord, how powerfully the Lord is moving you? This is a conversation I was having with uh, Oliver. Oh, by the way, this is Lisa. She's from South Africa. Very sweet. Um, but no, I was talking to Oliver at breakfast um, from, the t from the team, and this is what we were talking about. And then I was like, well, why don't we just go over? Randy and the team, they're right over there. Let's go ask. And he's like, oh, I don't know. Can we do that? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, we totally can. So we go over to the group, and we kind of sneakily sit by them so that they can know. They'd see us that we're there, and they know that we're there, and we're wanting to ask something. So that worked. So they, we were able to ask Randy. And, his, and in his, where is he from? In his kind of sudden accent, he's like, oh, that's easy. Keep praying for the sick. That's how you stay humble because we can't heal anybody. And God doesn't heal every single person we pray for. So we know it's God, and it's definitely not us. So keep praying for the sick. Um, another thing I really enjoyed that Randy said is that we, 
want to try to bless what God is doing, and we don't try to get God to bless what we are doing, because it's a lot easier to bless what God is doing. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? I knew this whole time. I was just there for the ride. I wasn't doing anything. I was just, I was just doing this. Hold, come Holy Spirit, all pain be gone. And they just people falling left and right. I, I, I wasn't doing anything special, but God was there and he was in it and he was moving. And I just was on the ride for, for just, just to see. It was really cool. I didn't have to conjure up any faith. I didn't have to manufacture, you know, words of excitement and emotion. So that was really cool. Um, oh, at this point, I'm still kind of twitching from the day before. And um, every, every time we went to the church, we would take this bus. And because all of us are just filled so much, a lot of times we tried to turn the bus into a fire tunnel and not just tried, but succeeded. So we would just be, you know, pouring fire, Holy Spirit, on the people coming into the bus as we were going to sit down, and the people just kind of stumbling, you know, like, trying, to, trying to get to their seats. <laughs> it was so much fun. <laughs> I think I called it a Holy Spirit party. Oh, also this, at this impartation, there, were a, there was this couple from Florida, and man, the Lord liked to give them holy laughter. So they were constantly laughing hysterically, and it was really, really fun. And I didn't know the Holy Spirit could be so much fun. Or following Jesus could be so much fun, you know? My, my Christian life is, I mean, it's been good, but it's been mostly a struggle, I would say. Because it's, because I read about all these things and all these stories, but I don't really see it, so I'm doubting, is it really real? And is God really that good? And is it really that cool? And is this really is this such of an adventure? Because it seems really hard most of the time. Um, but yeah, it is that good. It is that good, it is that fun, and it's way more fun than we ever thought. Next slide. So, Komodidaji Atus, it's the first time that Global Awakening had ever been to this church. And, um, hmm. so it was packed. Um, it was also very chaotic. So, they were kind of, it was a hard floor, and people were, you know, we had to be careful where we were laying the bodies as they fell, because they were just kind of crisscrossing, and it was a mess. Um, we didn't have a lot of translators either, and so the way it worked is we, after the impartation, and we, we moved into the healing, and basically you were with your translator, or without a translator, depending, and then whenever you were ready to pray for the next person, we just raised our hand, and then people would find us and come and receive prayer. This is the night I saw the most healings of the whole trip at once. Um, I'm trying to get through these quickly. I don't know how much time we have left. We still have time. Okay, but there's, like, there's good stuff coming. Oh, man. Okay, so Victor was healed of allergies on the first prayer and was crying almost immediately. Um, I prayed for a man named Leonardo for a herniated disc in his neck and, and hip, and the pain went down. And also for a knee that was going to need surgery. And after praying, he felt no pain at all and was convinced he was not going to need surgery after that. I prayed for a woman named Beatrice, whose there was an issue with her legs and with the cartilage in her legs. And after praying, she felt heat in her back and then her pain in the legs was completely gone. Um, I prayed for a woman named Hegiani. This was intense. She was sitting in a chair because her back and neck pain was so intense. Um, so somebody else got me to go to her and pray for her. Um, I start praying for her and commanding the pain to leave, and the Holy Spirit just poof, hits her, and she starts shrieking and shaking and jumping down on her chair. And if you think that's weird, it's, it was a little weird. Um, but she felt a lot of heat, and then all of her pain was gone from her neck and from her back, and she stood up, and she was so amazed. And as I was recording that this was happening, she was standing next to me, and she was telling me, yeah, and I felt, yeah, and I shook a lot, and I felt a lot of heat, and I'm just like, yeah, yeah, she did. And anyway, if you want to hear the recording, I have all that on my phone. But we don't, we don't have time to share all of that. But that was really cool. I prayed for a woman named Anna, who had many ovarian cysts on the left side and myoma, um, and she felt a lot of heat while I was praying. We can't confirm until she gets it scanned, but she was definitely experiencing something. Um, I prayed for a little girl named Elise, uh, who was about, I don't know, eight or nine. Um, her mom 
um, she had some, um, her mom was worried that her leukemia was coming back. Um, so I prayed for her the first time and nothing really happened. I prayed the second time and she felt a little bit of heat. Don't know what really came of that, but it really broke my heart. Um, I prayed for a woman named Hosanna for gastritis in her stomach and pain in her legs. And she felt a lot of heat and then all of her pain was gone. And I prayed for a woman named Josie who was not able to move her right shoulder behind her back. Um, so prayed for her. She felt a lot of heat. In fact, so much heat that she had to take off her jacket because she was getting hot. Um, and after that, she could move her shoulder in all different directions behind her, up and down. She was really excited. It was amazing. And then we also prayed for a girl named Nyusa who had epilepsy. Um, prayed for the Holy Spirit to come. And I was angry at this epilepsy because my cousin has epilepsy and it has really, really made his life hard, harder. Um, so I was like, ooh, epilepsy, mm, we don't like you. So I pray for her, pray for the Holy Spirit to come. The Holy Spirit kind of hits her and she's kind of like feeling something. She's feeling something, bouncing around, feels heat, whatever. Um, I told her, please continue taking your medication, but get that checked out. You know, don't just stop your medication. I mean, I believe you were healed, but, you know, got to be responsible. Um, so that was cool. I was very excited about that. I can't wait to pray for my cousin now. Um, then there were... There was a woman with, with white hair. This was hilarious. She, I was praying for her. She had uh, lower back pain and knee pain. Pray for her. The spirit comes on her. She starts speaking in tongues and turning in circles like this. And she just keeps spinning and spinning and spinning. And I'm like, wow, that's really strange. And so we're just, you know, trying to contain her. Her arms are flailing. And <laughs> it was so funny. Um, Anyway, so she had all this knee pain. After that, she's jumping up and down. She's like, oh, my knee pain is gone. And she's jumping on her knees. It was really cool. That was all one night. Yeah, that was one night. Next slide. Okay. Comunidad de Grasa. This was the church we went to. That's why it says day 7 to 10. Um, we spent a lot of time at this church. It was kind of like a conference. Um, uh, the Global Awakening, they go to this church every year or so. Um, so, so um, we're referencing back to something. I, I asked the Lord to heal something in me so I would increase my faith, and I also wanted to have a confirmed word of, word of knowledge. And this night, both of those things happened. So... I was sitting in the audience, and I knew that a word of knowledge could be something like a little sympathy pain, so I feel a little sympathy, or I just feel a weird little pain that was not my pain, and I was like, oh man, oh man, I don't want to share that. That's not appropriate for a room of 2,000 people, and I think, well, but I don't even know if it is a word of knowledge, and I haven't had a confirmed word of knowledge, so how do I know it's even right, and whatever. And I'm like, oh, why me, you know? So I go up there, and there are people sharing behind me. Lo and behold, there, so we're, there, we're, our team is broken up into two. There's, there's a, a line in the front, and then there's a line in the, on the stage. One of the women on the stage um, has a word of knowledge about a left knee collapsing. And that's what my knee had been doing for days. Um, it has done that before in the past. It doesn't always do it consistently, but it was getting really bad on this trip. So bad that I had to keep my legs straight to go up and down stairs. So I was going, I was going down the stairs like this. Because every time I bent my knee, it would flare up with pain and then kind of collapse down. Um, so I was like, oh, I wonder if that was for me, because that's kind of, you know, that's kind of specific. Left knee collapsing. Um, sounds like me. So... So they said, um, before anybody prays for anything, just try it out. So I'm like, I don't have anything to lose, except maybe it might hurt. So I go down, and man, it hurts just like it did before. It still really hurt. And then they say a prayer. And I say, okay, try it out again. And I'm like, okay. I mean, it literally just hurt just when I went down. And I go down, and it's all gone. I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel any heat. I didn't feel any Holy Spirit, anything, nothing. Now look at this. Woo. 
I can bounce, I can jump on my left knee now. Woo! So that was really cool. I was really pumped about that. Back to my word of knowledge, this is all the same evening. So I'm standing next to my roommate, Jasmine, and I'm like, Jasmine, I think I have a word of knowledge, but it has to do with lady parts. I really don't want to say it. There's 2,000 people here. How could I say this? And she's like, Shanna, you have to say it. What if God wants to heal somebody with that? Don't fear man. You have to share it. And I'm like, no. Why me, God? Why couldn't you give me a different word? Why did it have to be that? Oh. So they're coming by with a microphone. It's almost my turn. And I'm like, oh, I'm just going to say pass. I'm just going to say pass. Oh, but I should share it. Oh, I just, I'll just pass. It comes by and I go, pain in the lady parts? I hear? <laughs> I didn't say it like that, but that's how I felt. And I'm just like, please kill me now. Put me in a, you know, just. <sighs> Fortunately, there were a lot of people standing for a lot of different conditions, so nobody would have ever known any women who stand, stood up. They might have thought, oh, maybe it was for the last word. So maybe it was stealthy enough where it wasn't too embarrassing. But lo and behold, when they had people come up for prayer, come here, up comes the first woman with that, with pain, and I, I wrote down word for word what I recorded. We just prayed for Denise for my word of knowledge, and now she's on the floor having a good time, still shaking. <laughs> the next recording. Denise just got up off the floor. She says, all her pain is God, gone. Glory to God. She gave me a kiss. The next person we prayed for was Christiane. I told her she's next, and now she's on the floor. She was asking for prayer for the same thing. She's still on the floor. Still shaking a bit. We'll see what happens. Christiana is off the floor. She's crying. All the pain is gone. Next prayer. There were three women that came. We just prayed for Daniela. She came for the same word of knowledge. I said to her, two women have been on the floor with this pain, and you're next. <laughs> Down she goes. All I said, all I said was, come Holy Spirit, all pain leave now in Jesus' name, down she goes. Just like that. She was on the floor for over 10 minutes. Um, in between there, I prayed for a man named Julio. Um, he had something in his, in his hip that doesn't always hurt all the time, so he wasn't able to try it out. So I don't know if he was healed, um, but he, it was preventing him from playing soccer. Um, so I was praying for him, and then for whatever reason, I said, may your, may your soccer be a ministry. And then he's like, well, as it turns out, I actually have a soccer ministry. And I was like, whoa, I didn't know that. That's really cool. I must have been listening to the Spirit or something. That was really cool. I didn't tell anybody else that they should have a soccer ministry. Anyway, so after that, the next recording. Donnie is off the floor. She has come to tell us that all of her pain is gone. She felt the Lord speaking to her, and she was on the floor for 10 minutes or more. That was incredible. Um, the same Donnie, who was the third woman who fell and was healed, came to me again a few days later to let me know her pain was still all gone. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Um, then there were a few people I prayed for, for for fear and anxiety, and on this day, I prayed for a girl named Isabella for fear and anxiety. And uh, my team lead each of us had a team leader. Uh, my team lead had been telling me about how his struggle with fear and anxiety. I have struggled with a lot of anxiety. So he told me some tips. So I, I prayed for Isabella. And then I just basically told her, well, my team leader, Aaron, he told me this and that and this and that. And I was just telling her all those things. And then she, she's like, you know, thank you for your prayers. And then she turns around to go away. And then she comes back and she's like, hey, who is this Aaron? And then Aaron just happens to be standing to my right. He was, wasn't there before. He's suddenly there. And I'm like, Oh, uh, this is Aaron, actually, right here. Um, so then Aaron prays for her. She goes down. It was cool. Next slide. This is the room that I shared that room, that word of knowledge in. Yep, that was a lot of people. Um, take away, one of, one of the takeaways from Randy, there's a connection between faith and the Lord's power. 
and faith and hunger pull on the anointing. So it's a mystery because God can heal us when we have no faith, and He can heal us, but He cannot heal us when we have a lot of faith. So it's a mystery, and it's a principle rather than a law, but there is a connection where Jesus says, your faith has made you well, where faith plays a role. And God gives us the faith, so we don't have to manufacture it. Um, and faith can be granted through the power of a testimony, or it can come when we are reading Scripture. It can come, you know, but it's a gift from God. So, and God loves to, to answer prayers that are, give me more faith, you know. He's all about answering that prayer. Um, let's see. Okay, I'll just share one story from here. <clears throat> um, prayed for a girl named Caro. Um, she had a, a breathing issue um, in her neck. Um, and when she came up for prayer, she said she was carrying a lot. And so I started with having her repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I give everyone and everything to you. And my translator was, was translating. So she said that she starts crying, and I give her a big old hug, some ministry hug, I guess, or Brazilian hug. Brazilian hugs are really nice, I just got to say. I bet Allison can attest. Yeah. Um, so she just sobs and sobs and sobs, and something is just coming out um, after all that. And I'm just speaking love to her. You're precious. You are chosen. You are, you are worth everything, and uh, she was just getting wrecked. Um, and then her, her pain in her neck was 50% better after that. Prayed a couple more times. It's 90% better, but it's still not all the way. So I'm like, Lord, just give her some Holy Spirit laughter. Give her some of that joy. We have a lot of alegria going around here. Give her some of that. She starts laughing hysterically for like two minutes, and she just can't contain herself. And I'm like, man, that's a lot of emotion. That's a lot of crying and laughing. I hope she's okay. Um, but after she was able to collect herself, the rest of her pain was gone. She could breathe freely. It's super cool. Next slide. Brazilian barbecue is delicious. Amen. And this was my translator. She's just delightful. Okay, next slide. I don't have a lot of time. <clears throat> okay. Um, this woman from our team, the Lord was really blasting her a lot. So she ended up on the floor a lot of the times. And actually, that, and there's my roommate, Jasmine. And we had to carry her to her room. It was hilarious. Um, but this is the front of the, the, the entrance to the hotel. And she's just laying there on the floor. And we're just saying, more Lord, bless her, bless her, you know. And then um, the other folks were coming in from the team, and they were walking by, and they saw her on the floor, and they were like, give her more, Lord, give her, and they were just, you know, blasting her on their way out. Anyway, it was really funny. But she looks like she's having a good time. She's in a spa. That's a good Holy Spirit spa. We like that. Um, we also had some communion with Randy um, um, that Randy led, and then we did some baptisms after that. So that was cool. Next slide. All right, then we had another uh, night of impartation at the same church. Um, there were about five or six people who fell and got hit by the Holy Spirit after I prayed. And then at one point, I'm, I'm climbing over chairs in the audience to reach the people that God is touching. And I'm just like going like this, and I'm like, ugh. And I reached this part of the audience, and they're, like I said, these two people from Florida in our group, they were getting a lot of Holy Spirit laughter. And so there was a lot of laughter in my heart, too. So I'm just like, tee hee hee, and then I'm like, you know, praying and laughing. The person I pray for, she starts laughing hysterically, and it starts spreading. And then there's an entire section of the audience. They're basically falling out of their chairs, and they're laughing so hard. It was a, I call it a Holy Spirit party. It was so much fun. It was the most fun. Um, and I walk right, uh, around the back, <clears throat> um, and... I ran into this girl named Natalie. I don't think we have time to tell. It's just a cute little story. She's lovely. I end up on the other side of the audience. There are already a couple of people laughing. So I just pour some kerosene on the fire until there are even more people laughing. And then there was like, there must have been like 20 people laughing hysterically about who knows what. It was just really funny. What can I say? Um, and then at the end, prayed for a woman with a heel spur. All of her pain disappeared. 
and she was able to walk without pain that was causing numbness up, up her leg. She had the condition for five years, and she was able to walk without pain. It was really cool. There was a girl behind her who wanted prayer for anxiety and depression, and as she was starting to tell me that she wanted prayer for this, she started screaming. So I gave her a hug because I could tell this was just pain that was coming out. So I gave her a big hug. Um, she got it out. She felt a lot better after I was, you know, praying the Father's love into her and just comfort. And she said she felt a shift and a difference after that. So I was, I don't, you know, who, who can say that she was healed instantly of, of uh, anxiety and depression? But the Lord was doing something in her. So I just encouraged her, keep getting plugged into a home group and keep working through that. And Oh, man. And this man on the floor, he was deaf in both ears. And Randy had started praying for him um, that morning, so I had a lot of faith for him. Um, I got pulled aside. I, was, I, you know, I didn't know who else to pray for. I was kind of walking around. I get pulled, and I'm like, hey, go pray for this guy. He's been waiting a long time. And I'm like, oh, no, it's the deaf guy. I don't know how to do that. I don't, uh, me? Uh. So, you know, I start praying for him. Um, there's my translator translating for me, and then the deaf translator on the other side, and he's, and at first I'm like, close your eyes. Wait, don't, don't, don't close your eyes. Actually, look at her, so you know what I'm saying. And <laughs> it's really ridiculous. Um, so I'm just praying for him and blessing him and, you know, commanding his ears to hear or whatever, and I blow in each of his ears for, I don't know, just because I felt like it. I was like, whoo, whoo, you know, like that three times. He starts swaying a bit. And his translator is like, ooh, she goes and gets a catcher for him. This is a big guy, tall, very tall. Just, yeah. So he falls, and he falls on the ground, and he's lying there. And his eyes were closed, and he kept getting hit more and more. And I was praying for him, and then he falls. He couldn't hear what I was saying, I don't think. Anyway, so he was on the floor. And then one of the other team members comes and then starts praying for him in tongues. And, yo, this is my biggest regret of the entire trip. Somebody came and said, we're loading the bus to go back to the hotel. You have to go right now. And I'm like, no. What about the deaf guy? I want to see this deaf guy's ears healed. And that's my biggest regret because I don't know what happened after that. I don't know if he could hear after that or not. But I know the Lord wants to heal him. And the Lord wants him to be able to hear. What I should have said is just leave me here. I'll sleep in the church if I have to. I'm going to see this thing through. Big Ugh, regret. I'm still mad about that. Just leave me here. That's what I know to do. Next time I'm doing that. But the Lord was really touching him. He did something. Whatever he did, I'm sure it was good. Next slide. Um, okay, this is good. This is good. We're getting towards the end. I'm not going to go over. Still with me? Are you ready? You want some more? Okay. I do. So, I was sitting next to an 11-year-old boy, and, um, oh, the title is We Are Co-Laborers with Christ. I didn't understand what co-laborer with Christ, with Christ means. I thought I was doing all the work, and you had to work really hard to make God move and do something. Um, but actually, God does all the work, and we're just along for the ride. So that's how we're co-laborers. We don't, we're not trying to force God's hand to move. We're like, God, please move, but God wants to move. And I don't understand the mystery yet, but definitely understand more about what that means than before. So, sitting next to this 11-year-old boy. This 11-year-old boy had gotten slain in the spirit the night before, and he went and started reading Intimacy with God by Randy Clark. Little 11-year-old boy is reading Intimacy with God by Randy Clark. That's pretty cool. Um, he has a little translator next to him, so we're kind of talking. Um, and so... Then when we're doing the impartation in the morning, I just start asking the boy, hey, why don't you pray for them? You know, the Lord can use you. So that's, that's him praying for somebody. Fifteen people that he prayed for fell. Yeah. The Lord was already touching them. So what, one thing that Randy does is he, he, starts with the, he wants to start with the people that God is starting with so that we're blessing what God is doing and not trying to make God do something that he's not doing at that time or not yet. So... I was just pointing him out. Hey, pray for this person. Eventually, I made sure that he wasn't standing behind them because that wouldn't be, that wouldn't be good. So we got catchers, and he was standing on the side, and we figured all that out. Um, 
This was also the day that the girl who was on the floor the other day came and told me her pain was still gone. This was really cool. One of the translators, Pedro, came up to me and said that at one point I had told him to go pray for somebody, and that was the first time he prayed for somebody and they were healed. That was cool. That was really cool. Go, Pedro. Keep it up. Um, oh, I hope Donna comes in with the kids. So this is the day that we prayed for the kids and the kids' ministry. And let me tell you, it is wild to see kids slain and laying on the floor all over the place. There are just kids falling everywhere, bodies everywhere. And there are um, the teachers. I prayed for the teachers. Um, one of the teachers fell right after I said to increase the gift of teaching in her life. Down she goes. Next teacher, I was, you know, blessing her and blessing her or whatever. But when I said to give her words of knowledge, then she falls. And the other teacher just fell right away. Didn't have to do anything. Just. Um, and then this was really cool. So this girl, this little girl in the middle, she wanted prayer for her grandma's knees to be healed. Is very sweet. So I go to the girl and I say, you know, all pain leave now from your grandma's knees in Jesus' name. And the girl falls down. I believe her grandma's knees were healed. I mean, I don't know. I would love to get it confirmed, but she went down. Um, it was incredible. It was an incredible thing. Can't, I can't even tell you. Okay, we're getting to the last cool stuff. There's more cool stuff, actually, but I'll try to be quick because it's time. Okay, so I, you know, we go back into the sanctuary. I start feeling really heavy. Like, I'm like contorting, and I'm like, ugh. So eventually, I just keep getting pushed further into the ground, and I'm feeling so heavy, and I'm like, is this the God? Is this God's glory or something? Cause, and then eventually, I'm on the floor, and I can't push myself up, so I'm like, well, I guess I'm just going to lie here. Um, you know, I don't even know what my emotions were doing. I was just like, huh, I'm on the floor. Hmm, this is interesting. I asked my translator to come get me some people to pray for, so I pray for them from the floor, and they have to kneel down by me so that I can lift up my hand and pray for them like this. Um, so I pray for somebody's back, and, and I don't even know, some other stuff. Um, this other translator, she comes and starts prophesying over me, so I'm like, whoa, so I record that. And, uh, and then, are you guys ready for more wild stuff? How, how oh, you know, Are you excited for this? I am. I am. I'm ready. Okay, so one of the staff members from the church, she sees me on the floor. She comes at me with panic in her eyes, and her hands are shaking like this. She says, you have to help me. You have to help me. I don't know what this is. And I'm like, whoa. And I start feeling fear entering my body from her. And I'm like, wait a minute. This is a demon. The demons have no authority here. I'm safe. There's no authority. And so I'm like, oh, I've never done this before. I don't know how to cast a demon out. Help, you know? And I tell my translator, please go find somebody more experienced. But I'm like, well, somebody's got to do it. And I'm here and she's here and I get be gone in Jesus' name, you know? Um, try to do the things I remember to do. Submit, stop manifesting, you know, leave her alone, whatever. She falls next to me. I'm on the floor. I still can't get up. I'm casting a demon out from the floor. And I'm like, <laughs> be gone in Jesus' name. Be gone. <laughs> And eventually, she's, she's relaxed. Um, the demon did stop manifesting. She started, you know, smiling and laughing and looking really relieved. The translator found a more experienced person, and he made sure everything was okay. So I'm like, phew, that's good. Um, so eventually, I'm able to sit up, and the same little girl brings, starts bringing her friends Little, other little children to be prayed for. Prayed for a little girl with a pain down in her calf. Um, she said all her pain was gone. Um, really cool. Uh, prayed for a boy with a toothache. He said his pain was gone. Four of these kids kept coming. One of the girls fell. Um, there were about five kids. They're just one after another. It was wild. Um, and getting towards the end here. Um, then there was a second girl who was experiencing um, some kind of demonic activity. I could see her from where I was on the floor earlier, and, I was, and she was kind of swaying around, and her eyes were not focused, and it was really strange. And I thought, man, I don't know if that's right. 
Um, so I had asked a staff member to go check on her, make sure she's okay. And when, after the staff member went and prayed, she fell down and came back and said, everything's fine. And I'm like, no, I don't know. So I go look at her and she's not looking nice. There was a puddle of tears on the floor with smeared makeup. And, and I'm just like, not, something's not right here. So pray for her. Um, another team member comes. I wasn't able to get whatever was was um, oppressing her. I couldn't get it out on my own. Another team member came, put his hand on her, and she calmed down. And then I prayed for her and led her through prayers of forgiveness and repentance. And that's the girl with the blue hair. When she came up and looked at me, I was like, what a beautiful girl. She's gorgeous. And she looked so happy and so at peace. And I was so grateful what the Lord did for her um, to free her from whatever that was. Um, so that's, that's two in one. It was incredible. Uh, next slide. So these are, the, these are the stats from the trip. Sovereign is misspelled and rededication is misspelled, but this is a picture, so I didn't spell it, so don't judge me. Um, I also really enjoyed my team member Wendy's quote when we were at the airport because um, we had so much fun. And she said, this is considered Jesus Disneyland, the happiest place on earth. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I prayed to God. I was like, God, I really want to know that you can do this in the U.S. and not just Brazil. Please heal the first person I pray for when I get back from Brazil. So at the Miami Airport Hotel, um, after taking a much-needed nap, we had a 14-hour layover in Miami. There was a woman behind me in the pool in the hot tub. And she throws a pen to try to get this lizard to move away. And I turn around and I see the lizard and I see the pen and I'm like, what's going on? And she's like, that lizard, I'm trying to get that lizard to move. And so I shoo it away for her. We end up talking. I was like, hey, I was just in Brazil, saw a bunch of people healed. Do you need healing for anything? And she's like, well, my knees and my right ankle. So I pray for her knees and her right ankle. She's still in the hot tub. She says she starts feeling throbbing in her knees and uh, um, popping popping in weird ways. So I'm like, all right, get out of the hot tub and, you know, we'll try it out. And she tries it out. She's like, huh, huh, my pain is, you know, I was like one to 10. What was your pain before? What is it now? It was a, she said it was a 10 before. And after she got out, it was a three. So I'm like, huh, I'll pray again. All pain leave in Jesus name. And then all her pain was gone. She's a woman from Alabama. She was really excited to go home and tell her friends at her church in Alabama, um, Birmingham. Um, and then, um, whew, sorry, last story. Uh, one of my friend's moms, uh, I found out that she um, loves the Holy Spirit too, and she's going to Voice of the Apostles. And so I called her on the phone, um, and she was like, whoa, you had all that experience in Brazil? Could you, could you pray for me? I'm going to come over to your house so you can pray for me. And so I did. And she, and as we were praying, she kind of collapsed into my couch and was having like a spa moment with the Holy Spirit. It was nice. Uh, I prayed for her wrist, her, um, her right wrist. Um, she had had cartilage damage from a car accident years before, and she, was going, she, also, she already had surgery scheduled. Um, and she said she could barely even sign a check with her right wrist because it hurt so bad all the time. She never used it for anything. And then while we were there, she wrote an entire page with her right wrist with amazement the entire time. I never write this much. I can't write this much. How am I still writing? It's not hurting. And, you know, we prayed for the stiffness to be gone. We're watching it. Um, I talked to her the next day. She said it was feeling a little stiff from all the writing. Um, so we're going to keep up with that and see how that situation unfolds. But I don't think she's going to need surgery. I think, I think Jesus is going to heal her all the way. So once again, I believe we are a healing church. And uh, next slide, please. And uh, it's our inheritance. It's how this church started. It started with a huge outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And whatever the Lord has done, he is able to do again. Um, so if you're hungry for more of this kind of stuff, please sign up for Voice of the Apostles. I know we announce it every day, but the people that I went to Brazil with, those are the people that are going to be at Voice of the Apostles. And if you are hungry for more of God and you want to see more of his power in your life and more anointing, just go, make the time. You know, it's worth it. It's worth it. I guess that's all I have to say about Voice of the Apostles. 
Romans 1.11 says, For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you. So there's another mystery there, where Paul was imparting spiritual gifts, but we can also receive spiritual gifts directly from the Father, but sometimes God uses people to impart a spiritual gift. I don't know how all of that works, but whatever he's given me, I'm giving it out. So if you want some, come and get it. (laughs) Freely you have received, freely give. I am willing to freely receive, I mean, sorry, (laughs) I have freely received. I'm willing to freely give everything that I have received and seen, and that anybody who has sown to the Spirit will reap from the Spirit and reap from the kingdom of God. So if we could get a little music playing, and anybody who is hungry for more of the Holy Spirit, um, just come up and receive more of the Holy Spirit. So Lord, I just invite your presence. I invite your Holy Spirit to touch the people in this room with a mighty power and a mighty wind, and that you would increase the anointing in us, Lord. Increase the anointing and increase your power that we may see your people healed and set free and filled with the power of God, that we may walk into our inheritance. Come, Holy Spirit. If you want to receive more, just let the Lord know in your heart you want to... You want to receive more of him and just come up for prayer. Come up for prayer and I'll, I'll bless what he's doing. More Holy Spirit. Give her more, Lord. Fill her. Fill her with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Give her more. Bless these hands. I bless what you're doing. More anointing. More anointing, Lord. Give her more. Give her more in Jesus' name. Fill her, Lord. Give her more, Lord. Fill her with your Holy Spirit. Fill her, Lord. More, Lord. More. More anointing. More anointing for healing. Give her prophecy, Lord. Give her words of knowledge. Yes, Lord. Give her more, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit.